Although Christianity came to Ireland in the 5th century, the Abbey in Baltinglass was not founded until 1148, when Dermot McMurrow, the King of Leinster, founded the second Irish Cistercian Abbey in the valley of the Slaney River by its fording place in a town called Baltinglass. In accordance with Cistercian custom, the place was given a nickname, Divalis Salutus, or the Valley of Salvation. The Cistercian order was a newish order then, and seen as reforming the church's attitudes to monastic life. They were forbidden the customary feudal sources of revenue, such as tithes and rents, so they supported themselves by intensive cultivation of the land, which was also an essential facet of Cistercian monastic life. To maximise their revenue, they broke up their lands into small lots that were each responsible for paying monies back to the abbey. These lots were called granges, and that is reflected on the old names of areas around the hinterland in Baltinglass. Names such as Grangeforth, Moochgrange, Grange Con and Little Grange, among others, some of which survive today. As a result of the emphasis placed upon manual labour by the order, the Cistercian estates were generally always centres of excellence in agriculture, milling and fishing. They created markets for cattle, horses and wool which built up the commercial hub that still exists today in the modern melting glass. It's also no coincidence that there still is a mill race opposite the abbey on the Slaney River. The remains of a mill that was there for many, many years. Church records also show that Baltinglass Abbey owned a salt pit in Arklow. A regular supply of salt in those days was a valuable monopoly to have and would further enhance the wealth of the abbey. The Cistercians also made their mark as a medieval equivalent of Chagas, leaders in their time in modern agricultural development. They established a model of farm and farm layout for mixed farming and that efficient courtyard system can still be seen today in the layout of the modern Irish farm. In 1228, it is recorded that there were 36 monks and 50 lay brothers living here. Contemporary records describe the abbey as comprising at the time of a church, a castle, a hall with chamber, a kitchen, a dormitory with two cellars, a chamber with a store beneath, a granary, a water mill, and 2,300 acres of land in other buildings. The abbey was in use for over 300 years until its dissolution in 1536 by Henry VIII, as part of his policy to control the church. At that point, the annual income of the abbey was estimated at 126 pounds, at a time when the working man's wage was less than two pounds a year, making it one of the richest Cistercian abbeys in Ireland. The site of the monastery was then granted to Thomas Fitz Eustace, Lord of Kilcullen, for an annual rent of 10 pounds, nine shillings and seven pence. Eustace took the mantle of Lord Baltinglass During the rebellion of the third Lord Baltinglass in 1580, large sections of the abbey buildings were destroyed.
After centuries of neglect and its partial use as a quarry for building stone, little of the majesty and glory of the original Baltinglass Abbey now remains. The oldest part of the abbey today, which was built in the 1150s, is the east end of the church, and the church nave, which was built in the 1160s. The church, which contains a large variety of rich carvings, including animal and human figures, is considered one of the finest examples of Romanesque architecture in Ireland. A Protestant church was built among the ruins in 1815, evident today by the remaining tower, but it ceased use in 1883. The ruins lie adjacent today to St Mary's Anglican Church on the same grounds. <laughs>